All right, a few more folks are filtering in the room. Uh, everything I'm about to say, I will throw in the chat as well. So if you're just catching some of this, no worries. Uh, you know, welcome to this virtual college fair. It's so incredibly important that you are here to talk to these experts because they really are experts. This is what they do. They are so knowledgeable, not only about their institution, about the process in general. And you have this opportunity during this 45 minute session to learn about uh, their institution, but also to ask questions. So because they cannot see and they cannot hear you, the best way to ask a question is by using the Q&A button. It's either at the top of your screen or the bottom of your screen. You hit that Q&A, type a question to one or all of our institutions, and they can answer that at any time throughout the 45-minute session. Um, you can sign up for more sessions, the same place that you signed up for this one, and a recording of this Everything in that Q&A, everything in the chat is available at strivescan.com forward slash W-A-C-A-C. I will put all of that into the chat as well. Uh, and with that, we will kick it off with our first institution, Sarah Lawrence College. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Liam George, and I'm happy to be sharing a little bit about Sarah Lawrence with you today. Um, Sarah Lawrence is a small residential liberal arts and sciences college of about 1,350 students located just 15 miles north of Manhattan. So it has a really great balance of having access to the city when students are looking to take advantage of that, but having the more traditional liberal arts campus experience as well. Uh, it's about 30 to 35 minutes on the train right from Bronxville into Grand Central Station, but we also do offer free shuttle service on Saturdays for students to take advantage of as well. Um, I always like to emphasize that the city, New York City, is really a supplement to student life. Um, so we find that students go into the city probably about once a month on average. Certainly there are students who do more than that, some, some who go less than that. Um, but you always have to remember that there's plenty to do on campus and there are plenty of people around as well. Um, the thing that's really distinctive, though, about the college is its academic model. It starts with the class structure system. Um, so about 90% of our academic courses follow what we call the seminar conference model, seminars being roundtable discussion based classes that average 12 students and cap at 15 uh, really intimate really interactive courses where you have an opportunity to bounce ideas off of your peers and off of the professor directly. What's really unique, though, is that in addition to this students also have a chance to meet individually with their professors every other week for about 30 to 45 minutes during a time known as conferences. So at the beginning of the semester, what a conference will look like is mostly getting to know one another. But as it goes, as it progresses, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions about course readings and course materials, make connections um, to current events and other classes that you might be taking. But the main focus of the conference time is to start thinking about a larger independent project that you'll be doing uh, throughout the semester. And it's meant to be very much driven by your own uh, passions and interests. So it doesn't have to be exactly in line with the course curriculum. In fact, it's very much encouraged to be interdisciplinary. Um, you'll see a lot of different styles that students will, will kind of go about um, completing this assignment, but you'll see students in writing courses, designing uh, portfolios of poetry or short stories or a few chapters of a novel, whereas students in the sciences might do some hands-on scientific research and uh, still more uh, students in foreign language courses might do translations of texts. Again, it's really meant to be driven by uh, your interest. So it's your chance to hop in the driver's seat and really take control of your learning in that setting. Um, these courses are all five credit courses, but you take only three per semester. So in terms of the overall time commitment, it really will balance out with any other course structure. Um, the other 10% of academic courses are in small lecture format. So usually, those are usually like 30 to 40 students in those classes, and they're always still taught by professors, never TAs or graduate students teaching any of the courses at Sarah Lawrence. Um, the only exception to either of those two class styles comes in the performing arts. For, so if you are interested in the performing arts, just understand that it is a more conservatory structure. It'll definitely be more in class time overall for any performing art that you pursue, uh, but less expected outside of the classroom. And it really gives students who have an interest in that an opportunity to take that uh, very, very high level performing arts course within the overall liberal arts structure. Um, so that's the class style. The other thing that's really kind of key um, to understand about the academics is the curriculum itself. Um, so we both have an open curriculum, but also one in which every student designs their own course of study. And so the idea of the open curriculum, I think that probably most students have at least heard the term, but I think that there is some value in taking some time to explain exactly what that means. And so there are three things that I'll point to. 
First, uh, when you're actually applying to the college, you're applying to the college as a whole and not to a specific program. When you are admitted into the college, that means that you've gained uh, access to every class and every program that we offer. Secondly, um, you have the opportunity, no matter what your main focus area happens to be, to still take courses outside of that course area freely. So it's not unusual at all to find students who are pre-med, but also learning another language. Maybe they're interested in psychology or uh, dance, but are still interested in taking philosophy courses. Uh, very common combinations at Sarah Lawrence and definitely something that is encouraged. Then lastly, we also don't reserve the seats in our courses for students studying just that specific subject. So no matter if you're taking a, uh, an environmental science course or an English literature course, you're gonna be taking that alongside historians, linguists, uh, philosophers, mathematicians, artists, all together coming up to the table and bringing something maybe a little bit different from one another. But I think that that really creates a dynamic atmosphere where you're learning just as much from your peers as you are from the professor and the course material directly. Um, so that's the idea of the open curriculum, but we take that one step further by having every student at Sarah Lawrence design their own course of study. So rather than having a more kind of a structured major minor structure, um, students will have the opportunity to uh, pick and choose course by course, a program that's best suited for them with the guidance of a faculty mentor. So you're not going through this alone if you don't know exactly what is going to be most beneficial for you. You can always rely on that person, but it gives you a lot more flexibility to take courses outside of your area as you see fit. Um, you have the opportunity to take some risks, try some new things out, uh, discover things that might be uh, new passions for you. At the same time, again, you have that person to rely on. So they'll let you know which courses really are imperative for you to take so that you know that this, that you will be a competitive applicant to a job or a graduate school when you do finish uh, your four years at Sarah Lawrence. Um, most students at the college do have at least two different areas of study. Um, so it's not unusual at all. And, and even though we don't call it double majoring or having a major and a minor, you certainly can do the equivalent at Sarah Lawrence. Um, so I hope that this was interesting to you all. And with that, I will turn it over to my next colleague. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Hofstra University. All right, hi everyone. It's very nice to be here this evening. My name is Jane and I am the person in Hofstra's Office of Admission who works with students from certainly Southern California. My colleague, Christy, works with students from Northern California. And I also work with students from Nevada. I'm just gonna share my screen a little bit to give you a little bit more information about Hofstra. So know that Hofstra is a medium-sized, comprehensive, private university. We are located in New York, just like many of my colleagues here tonight. Um, we have an undergraduate population of about 6,500 students. We also offer a wide range of graduate level programs. We have a law school as well as our own medical school. So our total population at Hofstra is about 12,000. We offer about 165 different undergraduate majors. Almost everything that's a major can also be taken as a minor. And even though we are a medium-sized institution, our average class size is super small. So classes average out at approximately 21 students and classes are capped at about 35. For most students, this very much resembles the high school size setting that you've been in, uh, so no changes there. And certainly know that we are a very geographically diverse university. Our students in our freshman class typically represent about 48 out of the 50 states in the United States, as well as a myriad of different countries outside of the United States. Again, I mentioned that we were uh, located in New York. We are exactly 25 miles east of New York City. So New York City is our biggest and our best next door neighbor, although we are located in a very suburban residential environment. Our campus is approximately 240 acres large. It also is a registered arboretum, as well as being the largest outdoor sculpture garden on Long Island. So it typically looks like a park, uh, very easy to navigate on foot. Yet students certainly use the resources of New York City for culture, for fun, for entertainment, and by all means utilizing New York City as an ancillary classroom. 
It is very easy to get from Hofstra's campus into near, nearby New York City by utilizing the train. It's about a 40 minute train ride from the two train stations that are equidistant to campus, taking the train directly into Pennsylvania or Penn Station right in New York City. And many of our students utilize New York City uh, for internship opportunities. The average number of internships for a Hofstra student is approximately 2.3. I know that's a little weird since you can't really do 0.3 of an internship, uh, but know that most students are doing two, if not three internships during their tenure at the university. This slide is not meant to give you eye strain, uh, but rather to share with you the plethora of undergraduate majors that Hofstra has to offer. We do have a variety of individual schools or colleges that make up the university. So for example, there is the Herbert School of Communication or the Zarb School of Business or our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, our College of Liberal Arts. All of our various majors fall within one of our schools or colleges, but like my colleague from Sarah Lawrence at Hofstra, we as well do not admit students programmatically. If you are indeed admitted to Hofstra, you then can enter any of the 165 majors that we offer. Hofstra is a very residentially based campus community with about 82% of our students living on campus all four years. Housing is guaranteed. So for students that wish to live on campus uh, the entire time, you certainly are more than welcome to do so. We believe in balance between your academics as well as uh, the social side of college. So know that there are more than 220 different student run clubs and organizations many things that you may have begun uh, while you've been in high school that you know you enjoy and wish to continue on with in college could be things like student government school newspaper community service things like greek life um, uh, clubs that are related to your major and such. We also certainly offer 21 Division I athletic teams at the university, uh, so cheering on the Hofstra pride is definitely a favorite pastime of many of our students. And just a tiny bit about our admission policies and our deadlines. Please know that Hofstra has been a test optional institution since way back in 2014. So in absence of test scores or students who do not wish to submit test scores, that has been the norm for us for the last six or seven years. We have two different kinds and types of admission deadlines, one being early action, which is the non-binding uh, format. We offer an early action one as well as an early action two. And then we also offer regular decision, which is on a rolling basis. Hofstra utilizes both the common application as well as our own uh, Hofstra application. And you can see uh, on the slide sort of our mid-range of test scores for those students who choose to submit them, as well as our average GPA for admitted students. I certainly hope that this has been a helpful mini introduction to Hofstra. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot or a, a quick picture of my contact information as I'm only too glad to help you out with questions that you have. Thanks so very much. And I will turn things over to my colleague who will be speaking next. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Marist College. Well, good evening. Let me just stop my timer. Uh, let me start from the beginning here. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Corinne Shell, and I am Director of West Coast Admission at Marist College, keeping it in New York. Uh, we are about an hour and a half north of New York City in a suburban environment, but easily accessible to New York City as the train is about a mile from us on campus. So our students do take advantage of internship opportunities as well. Uh, the picture that you're looking at here is a snapshot of campus from the Hudson River, which we're located right on. Uh, I call it the Academic Country Club as it's an absolutely stunning campus with uh, strong academics, as well as a lot of clubs and organizations and sporting events that our students can take advantage of. We are known as the Marist Red Foxes. That's our mascot. Uh, our size is a little over 5,100 undergraduate students. So the maximum in a class you will ever have is 35. 
once you get more into your particular field of study, you can have anywhere from 5, 10, 15, 20 students in a class. What's fabulous is that faculty know who their students are by name, usually by the second, third, or maybe fourth class. Uh, very visual learning. So not just a faculty member standing up in front of the class lecturing at the students, so very interactive. We do offer well over 40 different majors. And one of the most popular majors for an incoming freshman tends to be undecided. My theory is most 17, 18 year olds really aren't sure what they wanna study, so that's okay. We do have close to a thousand grad students, which is completely online. And we do have several of our different majors that students can get their bachelor's and their master's within a five year period of time. Business, computer science, psychology, crim uh, and criminal justice, uh, as well as communications. Our student body comes from 47 different states and 64 different countries. The picture in the background is of the Hudson River uh, with one of our boathouses that we do row crew. And then here's a listing of the different majors that we offer. Uh, very popular at Marist is business administration with concentrations in uh, finance, human resource management, international business and marketing. We do have an active investment center on campus. So our students are trading on Wall Street Monday through Friday with real money. Uh, with communications, as well as business administration, you have foundation classes that you need to complete. And then once those are done, that's when you go into your field of study. So communication is another very popular major, everything from advertising, communication studies, sports communication, uh, ESPN is an internship opportunity, uh, as well as uh, New York Mets, the, the, the if you don't like the Mets, there's always the Yankees. Uh, so we do offer that. We have public relations, journalism, fashion design, fashion merchandising, two other very popular majors. We are fifth in the country, 25th in the world for our programs. So you're not just taking fashion classes, you're getting a college degree. Uh, digital media is popular. Uh, we also have the media studies, film and television. And then we do have the pre-professional programs as well. And then our student success rate, uh, internships are very popular at Marist. Um, more than 83% of our students will do at least one internship while they're at Marist. Uh, and um, I talk about my daughter, she did three and she was public relations and advertising. She did three, six credits, graduated and in two months had a job in advertising. So we do state that our students uh, upon graduation within six months will have a job or be in grad school. We also talk a lot about our Florence campus uh, as it is a Marist campus in Florence, Italy. Uh, we do offer fully furnished apartments and dorms. There's a cooking class. Uh, all classes are taught in English. You are literally a stone's throw away from the Duomo, which is the red brick building in the background. Uh, and your schedule is arranged so that you have a majority of Fridays off so that you can travel. Uh, there's several school sponsored trips, but then students will decide, hey, let's go snowboarding in Switzerland and then you're gone. Or let's go to Germany and see what a real Oktoberfest is. So great opportunity for our students. And then study abroad, uh, keeping it with the international. More than half of our students will study abroad at some point in their college career to well over 70 different destinations around the world, not just Florence. We are a division one school for sports. We have 23 varsity, 12 women, 11 men. We have 16 club sports, everything from ice hockey, equestrian, uh, men's and women's rugby, cheerleading. Uh, I know I'm missing one or two, uh, men's volleyball. And then 96% of our uh, freshmen reside on campus. Um, the other 4% live at home with their parents. Um, and 90% of our students that wanna live on campus do. But if you came to campus, you'd understand why everybody wants to live on it. It's absolutely stunning. And then for affordability, we only require the FAFSA, not the profile. 90% um, of our students will receive some type of financial aid, merit scholarships, uh, all students accepted or considered. If you're eligible, it's part of your acceptance letter. We do offer music scholarships for instrumental, choral, theater scholarships, and then of course need-based financial aid. Picture in the background is of our football stadium, uh, football, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse, and a murals play there. And then we do offer a summer pre-college program. Unfortunately, this year it's all online, but it's still incredible. And then here's the different ways you can apply to Marist. And then here, if you'd like to visit the campus, we are open. We've been open all year. Uh, we do offer in-person self-guided tours and virtual programs. 
And then I will throw into the chat my contact information. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you for allowing me to share my passion about Marist. So now I'm going to throw it over to my colleague at the New School, keeping it in New York. Hi everyone, so nice to meet you. Um, let me just start this presentation up. Okay, great. So um, good evening again. My name is Flynn Linehan um, and I am an assistant director of admission here at the New School um, and the uh, rep for Southern California. So hey, West Coast. Um, I'm really excited to spend a few minutes to tell you a little bit about our institution. Um, and we are keeping it in New York. Uh, like my colleagues, we are in New York. Uh, specifically, we're in New York City right in the heart of everything in Manhattan uh, in the Greenwich Village neighborhood. Um, and the new school itself is the university, but within the university, we actually have five distinct colleges. Um, and three of these colleges offer our undergraduate degree programs. These are all going to live within Parsons School of Design, Parsons Paris, which is our European home base, uh, as well as in Eugene Lang College of Liberal Arts and the College of Performing Arts. Um, so this is truly one university, one home, um, but unlike some of the colleges that we've been talking to tonight, at the New School, you do ap apply to the specific college within the university that you would like to be admitted to. Um, and that's because of the degree of specificity and rigor of our specific visual art and performing arts programs. Um, so those are all gonna live within Parsons or within the College of Performing Arts. Um, and because those are BFA or B, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts, um, and BM or Bachelor of Music programs, you do have to go through a slightly different admissions process. So just something to keep in mind as you're looking at our colleges and the different options. Um, and again, as I mentioned, it's one university, so you can reach across disciplines, you can take classes from throughout the university despite the college that you've been admitted to, um, and there are so many ways to engage in interdisciplinary learning. We are a mid-sized university. We're home to about 10,000 students in total and about 8,000 of those students are pursuing their undergraduate studies with us. Uh, we have representation from all 50 states as well as 116 countries uh, and a little over 30% of our population actually comes from outside the US. So we're a very international and very global community here at the New School. And as you can see, we offer 134 degree and diploma programs. So this is the broad scope of what we offer at the new school. And there's a lot of different programs. So I'm not gonna dwell on anything here uh, in this short time that we have together, but I definitely encourage you to check out our website to learn more about all these areas of study. The things that I will highlight again are that at Parsons, Parsons Paris, and within the College of Performing Arts, most of our majors are BFA or Bachelor of Fine Arts programs. Um, at Manus School of Music, we offer the BM, the Bachelor of Music. Um, and these are studio-based courses of study where you're in the practice room or the studio. Um, whereas at Lang, this is our liberal arts college. So if you're interested in the liberal arts, the humanities, or the social and natural sciences, and you're looking for that small, intimate, seminar-based liberal arts experience, you will find that at Lang. Um, and I will mention too that we have great dual degree offerings for those whose interests might span multiple areas. We also offer over 50 minors, and these can be taken from throughout the university, so you're not restricted to minors within your college. This is just a snapshot of our campus. As I mentioned at the outset, we are in New York City. We're an urban campus, so it's not enclosed. Uh, we're very much woven into the city itself. All those red dots you're seeing on the campus map represent our campus buildings. We also have four dormitories. And over 90% of our freshmen do live with us on campus. Um, we are closed to visitors right now, unfortunately, hope to reopen soon um, to the public. But in the meantime, you can check out our virtual tour and I'll make sure to put a link to that in the chat. Um, it's really a great way to get a sense of who we are, our community, our environment. Um, it's an absolutely stunningly beautiful campus with so many resources. So I definitely hope you check that out. Um, we have a really rich, uh, engaged student uh, uh, body. Um, I would say our students are especially active within social justice and within the broader New York City landscape. Um, we also have great on-campus opportunities to get involved. You're seeing Narls the Narwhal on the screen here. That is our mascot. 
we uh, do have intramural and club sports, as well as a wide range of student uh, led clubs and activities. And of course, you're in New York City, so there's no shortage of stuff to do. Um, and our student leadership and involvement office will always make you aware of great opportunities and things to enjoy in the city and on campus. We also encourage students to intern. Um, this is just sort of a mapping of the over 1200 different industry partners that our students have access to. Um, some uh, highlights include uh, employers such as Mark Jacobs, HBO, the New York Times, the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Opera and Democracy Now, just to name a few. And just quickly to wrap, I want to show you the application requirements because I know probably some of you are juniors and rising seniors and starting to think about this. Um, we use the common application solely for our application process. Um, you will apply under the new school. So whether you're applying at Parsons or Lang or the Performing Arts College, you will start in the same place by applying to the new school. We require one admissions essay, your transcripts, your school uh, common app school report, two letters of recommendation. And very importantly, we are test optional and we have been for a long, long time. Uh, we're gonna look more holistically at your academics as a whole, um, but you're certainly encouraged to send your testing if you performed well and if you wanna share those results with us. Um, for applicants to Parsons, we do require a portfolio as well as the Parsons Challenge. Happy to answer questions about that in the chat. And you do go through an audition process for the Performing Arts College. Um, I'm gonna wrap up and just leave this on the screen for one moment so you can get my contact info. Uh, my name is Flynn again, and my email is flynn at newschool.edu. I'll be sure to put that in the chat um, and you'll see the links to our social media there at the top. Um, so thank you all again. And it was great to meet you and I hope uh, to see your applications to the new school. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Maine Maritime Academy. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm an admissions counselor at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, for those of you that are already familiar with California Maritime, uh, you're going to notice a couple similarities right off the bat. Of course, our name uh, over in Maine, we do the same thing pretty much as what happens over in California. Uh, we produce world-class mariners as well as some other majors that I'll tell you about. Uh, but you'll see right down in that center photo at the bottom, uh, we actually have Cal Maritime's sister vessel, where maybe you have our sister vessel, think of it that way. This is our 500 foot training vessel that many of our um, marine engineers and marine transportation officers take out in the summer. In fact, they just left today uh, for a 40 day cruise. That way all these students can get the right amount of sea time um, in order to pursue uh, the maritime licenses they get. I'll get into that more in just a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, we are located right on the coast of Maine. We're about an hour away from Acadia National Park. So if you like to hike and you like all things outdoors, uh, you'll definitely find a good home at Maine Maritime. A little bit more about us. We're a very small school, only about 950 undergraduates. And what that means for you is that you get a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your professors. You get to pick their brains about, uh, you know, maybe some of their experiences in the industry that you're gonna go into or their research interests, depending on which major you go in. We do offer 23 degree programs. Um, I'll mention uh, those in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But what's special about us is these seven professional licensing opportunities, five of which come directly from the US Coast Guard. Um, what this does is it gives you the ability to work aboard different sized vessels in waters all over the world. Uh, we're not all uh, work, I should say. There's a little bit of play, of course. Um, so you can find that down at our waterfront using our over 60 training, research, pleasure, motor, sail vessels, you name it. If you like to be out on the water, you'll find a home here um, in our different clubs, uh, varsity sports, and our student-run organizations. As I said, we've got 23 degree programs. The largest program that we offer would be our engineering, both marine and power. Those students learn every system you can imagine that would be in a floating building, i.e. a vessel, as well as you know how to keep the energy sector going. Transportation, those students are learning all those navigation skills um, to actually be the ones operating those vessels. Management, these international business and logistics students are the ones who are organizing all the goods that are going all over our world. Um, and ocean studies is, in my opinion, the most straightforward. These students are preparing to become ocean scientists and research scientists in their future careers. All of our classes across the board are geared at hands-on education. So what this means is you're gonna learn something in the classroom and then you're gonna go and do it. 
Um, so you can see here, you know, some of our ocean studies students are up in the top left uh, in our wet lab. They're learning those aquarium skills and keeping the critters alive that they just caught on our research vessel. Down at the bottom left is our tanker simulator. These students are loading uh, and unloading liquid cargo. You see line handling, ship handling, as well as the different engineering classrooms. And there's a variety uh, in addition to these that I mentioned. One thing that makes us pretty different is our regiment of midshipmen. So about 65% of our student body are in uniform at all times. Um, this makes us really look a whole lot like a military school. And for the most part, we are not. Uh, we're governed by the Coast Guard for these students earning this particular size of maritime license to be able to work and live out at sea. Um, but for everybody else, it's a typical traditional school and pretty much for these students as well in their regiment. When these students graduate, they are not going into any armed branch of the military. Um, they become what are called commercial mariners. So they're the ones in charge of getting uh, all of our goods and cargo all over the world safely. Maybe some of you saw on the news, not such a hot story, of course, the ever given in the Suez Canal, but that kind of gives you the scale of some of the vessels that our students will go on to work for. Um, those who are in the regiment. For everybody else, it's voluntary. Some students really appreciate the structure and they thrive. We do also have a na naval ROTC unit. So for those who do want to go on and serve, um, there is that option, Navy, Marine Corps, Naval Reserve. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that all of our students get quite a bit of experience throughout the summers, regardless of major, every major has a different requirement. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left, uh, our training vessel again, um, students are required to get a certain number of days out at sea, and we build that into the curriculum. International business, power engineering students, they have co-ops every summer. Um, internships are available to our ocean studies students. Uh, sometimes they go out on research vessels down to the Antarctic, all over the coast of Alaska, you name it. So our students are really out doing over the summer, applying the skills that they've just learned. And this is one of the primary reasons why 90% of our students are employed in their fields within 90 days of graduation. You can see uh, supply of some of the companies that our students go to. So as I mentioned, we're a small school, about 950 students. Um, and every year we have about 60 to 90 companies come to our career fair. So a small school that's almost, you know, one company per six students. These companies want our students who have these skills. Um, and this is pretty excellent for when they graduate. Last, if you are interested in applying, um, we're very similar to many colleges. We're on the Common App. We need uh, your high school transcript, one letter of recommendation. We are remaining test optional. Um, so don't sweat anything about that. And keep in mind these deadlines, November 30th is our early action. We are non-binding. What that means is when we say yes to you, you have until May 1st to say yes back to us. But you might as well apply early and just get it out of the way, especially if you know that you're interested. Um, last, if you're just curious how we stack up uh, for a small school, we do some pretty big things. Our students have been on campus the last two uh, semesters. Um, they're certainly going to return in the fall, and we are open for visits as well. Uh, just get in touch with me, Elizabeth Allaby, and I'll be happy to set that up for you. Hope that you have a good rest of your evening. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Marymount Manhattan College. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alexis McPadden. I am an admission counselor and alum from Marymount Manhattan College and I will be uh, finishing us out tonight for these presenters, um, bringing it back to New York City. Marymount Manhattan College is located on the Upper East Side of New York City um, and we were founded in 1936 as an all-girls Catholic school. We are no longer either of those things. We are a co-ed college with no religious affiliation um, and we're made up of nearly 1900 students. And so we are a very small college located in a huge city. So you can get that extreme one-on-one -on -one, hands-on uh, education within the city. Um, we currently have 32 majors and 45 minors for our students to choose from. We're always adding new programs depending on um, student interest. We just recently added a new minor in anti-racism. Um, and so our students are able to add that on um, whenever they'd like. About 65% of our students do double major. It's not required by any means, um, but when you apply to Marymount, you're applying for a specific major. Um, the only majors that we 
require portfolio auditions for our, um, our theater, dance, and art. Um, so if you're interested in our creative writing program, science programs, those are direct entry, but you will be applying as that student. Um, you can always apply undecided as well. We have uh, many students who come in undecided and then declare a major after their sophomore year. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1, with an average class size being of about 15 students. Um, there are no lecture halls on Marymount campus. Um, uh, largest class you're going to have is about 25 students. And then the higher in grade level you go, the smaller your class sizes will get. Um, there'll be multiple sections of that class offered, but the, the actual class sizes are very, kept very small so that students can get that hands-on experience. Um, incoming class statistics, average first year GPA is a 3.6, average SAT is an 1100, and average ACT is a 24. Um, we are test optional, so no need to worry about that if you don't feel like sending in those test scores. Um, but if you meet those averages or exceed those averages, we always recommend sending them in um, as that will only help you with merit scholarship. We're located on the east side of Manhattan. Um, 221 East 71st Street is our main academic campus. Our 55th Street Residence Hall houses all of our first year students or most of our first year students. Um, and then Cooper Square down in the East Village houses our upperclassmen students who opt to stay living on campus. Um, we do guarantee housing all four years so you don't have to move off campus if you don't want to. Um, but typically students will move off campus after their second year at Marymount. As I mentioned, we do have 32 majors. Anything with an asterisk next to it can be a minor. Um, and we do have theater minors, dance minors, um, and we also allow for our BFA students to double major. So we do have a general education curriculum that's built into Marymount's uh, classes. And that's how our students are able to get that double major if they are pursuing a BFA program. At, Career, at Marymount, Career Services is one of our um, largest offices here for students, and it is our college to career program in the heart of New York City. So they're going to help with everything from resume and cover letter building and writing um, to interview prep, job searching. Um, and after you graduate, you can always use um, our Career Services offices as well. Students can do up to five internships for credit. The background image on this slide is where some of our students have interned in the past year and a half. Um, have students all across the board, what better place to go to college um, and then New York City. It's the capital of so many different areas, um, fashion, business, um, food, you know, New York City has it all for, for our students. Um, if you're interested in theater or nonprofit work or science, you know, we are located within walking distance to multiple large name hospitals on the Upper East Side. Um, so our students really do take full advantage of the city and what it has to offer. All of our students are placed in a class called New York City 101. So students coming from the West Coast, no need to worry about getting acclimated to New York City. We have academic professors and peer advisors who will be able to help you and guide you through moving into New York City. Um, it's an academic class that's taught New York City 101 um, and it really does acclimate students to New York City. How to apply. We have um, three different application ap uh, admission plans. Early decision, which is binding. Um, only if Marymount is your top choice should you apply early decision. Um, November 1st is our deadline here back by December 1st, and then the enrollment deadline is February 15th. Early action is what most students will apply for Marymount. It is non-binding. Um, submit your materials by December 1st. You'll hear back by December 21st, um, and then it's the typical enrollment date uh, due date of May 1st. Um, and then any applications submitted after that are read on a rolling basis. Um, and for students interested in fine and performing arts, we do suggest getting your application in sooner rather than later so that we can um, get you scheduled for an audition or interview. Our application requirements, uh, like many of my colleagues, we're on the Common App. We also have our own MMC application. We need your essay, um, 200 to 500 words, um, either a Common App topic or one from our Marymount application. Um, and this is really a chance for you to show us who you are. Um, you know, we take a look at your resume and at your grades and at uh, your letter of recommendation, but your essay is really the opportunity for you to show us who you are outside of the classroom. So really feel free to get creative with those essays. We need one letter of recommendation, your high school transcript, optional test scores, and then the application fee. Um, do reach out to us if you'd like a fee waiver. We're more than happy to give those out to students. 
for scholarship opportunities. We have merit-based scholarships that are based on your academic performance at the time of application, and those are renewable all four years with the minimum GPA requirement. We do also offer competitive scholarships, which are for our theater students, dance students, or art students, and again, those are also renewable all four years. Lastly, I want to mention that we are a stackable school. So what that means is any external scholarships that you get, you can stack those right on top of your financial aid package at Marymount. We won't take any of your institutional aid away. Um, and lastly, we welcome you to stay connected. We're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and we are open for visits. So if you're coming to New York City this summer or next fall, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we'd love to have you on campus. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, if I could have all the panelists come back on, have their video back on, we're going to do a little roundtable question in the same order that you presented, uh, starting at the top. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process, starting with Sarah Lawrence College? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to say, but I would uh, start just by suggesting that, that students um, don't, don't shy away from schools that they haven't heard of necessarily. Um, always look for the school that is the right fit for you. Um, dig deep, never be shy. Definitely reach out to uh, us if you have any questions. Um, if you don't understand everything about the application or the school, um, that's what we're here for. It just goes right in order. Yep, Jane, you're okay, next. Fantastic. Just double checking. Uh, so I guess my best piece of advice is spend some time reflecting. Get to know yourself. Figure out what's important to you, what you're looking for in a college, what are the things that are going to really resonate with you. Um, so sometimes just sitting down quietly and thinking through things um, is super important. And last but not least, use your college counselor. They're an outstanding resource for you. Um, they are there to help you, to guide you, and to support you. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to them. And I kind of have to kind of piggyback on what Jane has stated as well as Liam, um, but my piece of advice to you would be uh, have fun. I know it's very stressful. And remember, this is a fit for you, not a fit for your parents. It's a fit for you. Uh, and and I again, just check out everything and anything that, that you're interested in and have fun with it. Oh, it's me. Oh my gosh, it snuck right up on me. Um, I would definitely echo what all my colleagues have said about finding your fit. All of these are just such amazing schools. So it's about identifying where you're going to thrive and be happy and successful. Um, I would also say, and this is kind of specific to arts program applicants, just because that's a little bit of my uh, expertise. If you're thinking about applying to something that's going to need an audition or a portfolio or something in addition to those basics in your application, just make sure you look into that in advance and prepare um, and reach out for help if you need it, be it for audition feedback or a portfolio review. Don't be shy to ask for that because I know that that can be a really, really stressful additional part of an already stressful process. Um, so that would be one tip for me. I really like uh, Corinne from Marist uni uh, University advice about having fun with this process. You should. I know it's stressful, um, but you're shopping around. It's a really exciting time. You get to kind of figure out what you want to do next and who you want to be, what type of college you want to go to. Uh, so really try to enjoy this time. Um, and the other thing I would say is certainly reach out to us, reach out to your guidance counselors. You have so many people out there who are rooting for you and we want to help you find the right fit. So be bold, ask those questions. It's hard going last after everyone said uh, such amazing things. Um, as a more recent alum, I will, or graduate, I will say um, definitely keep your options open. Don't put your blinders on. If you think you have your dream school in mind, still look at those other colleges. I was a transfer student, went to my dream school, got there, realized it wasn't for me. So keep your options open. Um, and again, ask questions. That's what we're here for. That is our job is to do that. So um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out.
Uh, thank you so much to our panelists, our experts. I always want to plug, please, please reach out to these folks because this is what they do. Uh, they have the tools, the keys uh, for you to find the right fit because that's what they care about is making sure that it is the right fit for you. So please reach out to these folks. Good luck to our students, uh, to our parents out there as well. When you leave, there's a four question survey that's very helpful to us. You can sign up for more sessions and in the chat, you'll see that you can get this recording available at StriveScan's website, which includes everything that's in the chat, which is so important, their contact information. So have a good evening and best of luck. Bye everyone, thank you.